Okay, so I have just uh, figured out how to do reports, and I'm going to show you how to add reports first off, and then um, configure them to work with your SQL table. Right, so um, there's actually a website you can use, um, and let's see if I can pull that out here. So this is the C Sharp Corner. It actually shows you how to install the extension. It's an extension already provided in Visual Studio. You just have to enable it and download it and stuff. Um, so yeah, you can follow this page. It's I could put the link on the screen. Um, you could follow this, and then you should basically get up to a, a point where it it works. But uh, I will show you how to do it. I'm just gonna copy this line because I'm gonna need that later. So yes, you can go to extensions, manage extensions, um, type in RDLC, and download this one. It's the RDLC report designer. Just download that. You're gonna have to restart your Visual Studios after you've done that, but yeah, um, that's gonna have that extension enabled. Um, you're gonna to want to go to uh, Tools, no, Package Manager, Package Manager Console, and then paste that line in that I just copied. It's gonna install. I've already got it installed, but it's gonna install the uh, uh, additional stuff to see the viewer and stuff in the in the Windows forms. So that's basically that installed. That it, uh, yeah, it's actually really easy. Um, might take a wee while downloading, depends on the internet speed. So, yeah. Okay, now I'm going to do that once that's installed. I'm uh, going to go to add a uh, new item. I'm do a uh, report. Report. Um, and it's going to be called invoice report. Sure. Invoice report. And that brings me to this page. This is the template of what your report is going to look like. So if you think of a report as like an invoice, uh, a company sends out an invoice to a customer, it has, it has all their information laid out in a way that you would want it. It's not randomly just like skewed like across a page and it's not like a, a, a random output from SQL. It's it's designed well. So this is the design. Yeah, basically. Yeah, it's the design. It's got built-in features in the toolbox. Uh, this is not the toolbox. In built in features in the toolbox. Um, so I can add, oh, I'm going to have to add a data set. But yeah, so I can add things like uh, tables and then add up certain information, make it lay, lay out well. Okay, make the layout look good. So um, I'm going to add a data set. I'm going to call this data set um, client report data set. Okay, even though that's it, yeah, shut up. Right. Um, and I'm going to do data set. <laughs> uh, I'm going to do the client table for the data set. Yes, okay. And then I'm going to do this and add the invoice report data set. Um, and then add the invoice table. So, yeah, you can choose your data source, which is you're probably only going to have one. Um, you could create a new one but you should have one already for your SQL tables and uh, your booking and all that so then you're going to choose your table okay that you want the uh, you want to be able to add data to the report from um, it can be a bit annoying with um, tables where like you can only add so if I add the client ID I can't add another type of thing to it like another data set to it because if I go to this client table the data set name is only one thing i can't have multiple it's, it's quite annoying but it doesn't really matter because i can just add different boxes from different things and make it look good like you, you should be able to if you're good at sort of designing you should be able to make it look really really good um so i'm actually just not i'm gonna bother doing this now uh, well i am but like yeah there, that's there. Now, this is annoying because the RDLC uh, file doesn't create it. Like, it just sort of, it, it it creates it the way, it is a template and it automatically generates it. Um, If you've got spaces, like I do, I don't, I regret this, but I have spaces in my SQL variable names because um, I did it for formatting the actual forms to make them look good the data grid views to make them look good but even though you can change the column names i didn't realize this but yeah you can change the column names um and you don't actually have to have the column name be the variable name i wish i knew that but i do know so um you're gonna want to right click on your invoice report to rdlc 
uh, open with. Okay, I'm just gonna save it. Um, open with the XML editor. Okay. This, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go to my previous project and copy what I did. Um, I'll show you how to do it here. I just don't want to have to go and change it all. And there's this one for clients, so client uh, report data set. Yes. Okay, so I just removed capitals. You're gonna want to keep this the same. If you've got spaces, you can have an underscore, but do you just basically go back and change the uh, remove the spaces from your SQL variable names. It's just not worth it having to change it to an underscore. It it takes a while in, in the uh, data set. In the original data set, it takes it takes a while to change it. Well, at least it took me a while to figure it out. Just go back and make sure you've got no spaces in your variable names. Um yeah. So go and do this. Basically have no spaces. Make it look yeah, how this does. I don't know if you've got the same variable names, but I'm just trying to hammer down that point. Do not have spaces, it'll mess you over. Um Okay, I'm gonna copy my uh, invoice one as well now. Invoice fields. Okay, it just removes all spaces. Uh, yeah, that's basically it. Now I'm going to go back to my. Or you'll see it's going to go white for a second. Yep, yeah. um, and then I'm going to toolbox. I'm going to add a table. I'm going to go and add the client first name. The date of birth and the invoice due date here separately because I can put it in the same table uh, and the overall total sure okay that's how that's going to be set up I'm going to move this over a wee bit okay um well, yeah, sure. That's it. Ah, uh, there's city as well. Just up here. This doesn't really make any sense for for an invoice report, but uh, yeah, you can work that out. Ah, right. So that's done. Um, we've designed our invoice or our report, and yeah, now we're gonna have to actually create a form to to put the uh the data into this. We're gonna go to. Why am I right clicking here? Nobody knows. I'm going to add the item. And we are going to call it report. Yes, report. And then I'm going to. No. Yeah, there's a problem. I will show you. Thank you for opening all these Visual Studios. Um, I will show you, and it's in the general. I'm going to remove this. Um, yeah. Okay. I will show you how to actually add this. You're going to want, because we we did this in the Nugget uh, package uh, console, we're actually going to have to go and just choose items. Right, right click on a blank space, choose items, go to browse. You want to go to your uh, your project. It's called Report Video. I just copied my original one, renamed it. Uh, and then you're going to want to open it, and then you're going to want to go to bin debug. Here's your program, your debug program. Um, you're going to want to go down to win forms, Microsoft the report viewer dot win forms dot dll. Okay, we're going to double click that, adds it. Okay, there we go. Now we've got a report viewer in the toolbox. We can add this to our uh, our form so we can see the the report that we generate. We're also going to add a button so I can just create it when I press this button and I'm gonna add a text box so uh, we can choose which thing we want to generate which I'm gonna make it so we can choose the invoice we type an invoice ID and then it gets all that information from the invoice ID um behind this let's see a bit I've done code on my other project um or my main project and this I will copy in the code here and I'll explain it. Yes, here's the code. We're going to have errors and I'll fix them. All right. So this is the uh, 
the connection string to your SQL thing, where the problem is I don't have the right namespace in. Okay, it's not called reports, it's called reports now. Um, we don't have a data set or data grid view, so I'm gonna remove that. Um, processing mode, this is the, you actually need to understand this, this is just, we're, lo we're, we're local, we're not, yeah, doesn't matter. Um, yeah, okay, well, this is the, the report path is the actual path to your, actually, we called, I called it invoice report. What did I call it? Oh. <laughs> um, it's because this is called reports load. There we go. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, this is the exact path to your invoice report to RDLC, and I have named it the exact same thing, so I sh uh, actually I will. I'll need to change it to... This, because it's report video now. Um, the invoice dial is my dog, my dog dial thing for the invoices. We don't have a data grid view. There we go. No errors. Cool. Um, in the invoice dial, this is the type of this is the thing that inputs the data or takes the data out of your SQL table and inputs that into a data table for you to then put into the report. So this, you probably should have one of these already for just taking data out of your um, SQL table. Um, this is just, th that's the search query, the selecting where the invoice ID is equal to this ID. Um, now, we need to have these column names. Um, ah, you can copy this code, by the way. That's what you're probably gonna want to do that. Um, these column names, are going to, you're going to want these to be the exact same as, do I have the XML file open? Nope, I do not. Um, as this here, open with XML. And we've added new stuff. Um, so the invoice report data set. These column names, if you look, are, let's pin that, um, are the same as, so invoice ID, client ID, invoice date, payment due date. We have Invoice ID, client ID, invoice date, payment due. It's actually the payment due date. So you're going to want it to be this one. The the data field is the uh, is the variable name. Okay, you're going to want this without spaces to be the same thing as your column names. So make your column names the same as that. Um, and I've got the same for my client table. This probably should be in the client dial, but what are you going to do? Um, so yeah, I, I removed the spaces, put in the underscores, removed the spaces, um, yeah, you're going to want to do that. And it outputs a data table. This data table is then used in the report, which is this, behind this. Um, this data table is then used here. So I create the new data table. Um, we get the ID, this is just... So this gets the client ID because I've got the client ID inside my invoice ID. All right, my invoice table, I've got the you know, the client thing. Uh, if we go to the invoice table, I actually have my client ID. So I can take the client ID out of my invoice table and then search and create a client table from the client ID inside my invoice table, which is kind of handy. So I got, that's how I got that. Uh, and then we input the data or we, or we create a data, a report data source here with, with the name of our, our data set. Um, where's the data set? Here, with these names. My report data set and client, our invoice report data set. Um, these are invoice report data set and client report data set, that's the name, and then our data table that we've taken out. And then we just add them here and we refresh it. So this should all work. Provided I haven't done anything. Oh, I have done something. First name. What's the problem? What's your problem? Oh, there we go. Spaces. Yep. Because it's generated this automatically whenever I added the new files. Um, overall, there's another one. Um, due date. Yeah, fields. Did I? I've got, I might actually just have it as that. First name is going to have underscore. I remember that. And then overall somewhere. Overall total. If I do that, do we have no problems? We've got no problems. What is my visual studio doing? Okay, doesn't matter. All right, I have an invoice 
31. Um, you can check what your invoices are. You should have that already, probably, in like a, uh, without a grid view. But you can let's just do that. Let's just show you how to do that. Um, you go to your data source. Um, you can go to, I'm going to go to my invoice table. And I am going to not see it. Okay. Because it's not there. It's in my server explorer. Data connections. Load, please. Thank you. Tables. Um, it is in the invoice table. I can right click that. Show data. So this is going to show me all the data that I've got. So I've got one called third. I've got an invoice ID of 31 and an invoice ID of 33. Okay. So I'll remember that. I can run this. Um, invoice ID 31. Run on this. What? <laughs> oh, I know. This doesn't have the running thing. The the on click button. On click. There we go. Um, there we go. Thirty one button. There we go. We've created it. There's my first name, Ben. My date of birth. Um, I'm two thousand and two, but sure. Um, that's the due date, and that's the the amount. Remember, we added that in the in the template. So there we go. We've created an invoice, and we could print this and. Yeah, you can basically this form is however you make it look. So, yeah, that works, I guess. Um, you're welcome, because this took me a long time to fucking get working. <laughs> uh, uh, stretching, cool. <sighs> We're done.